video is about graphing linear equations or graphing lines. And this is meant as kind of a refresher. So you've probably seen this before. Um, and just kind of a refresher on how do we how do we do this? What are the different forms uh, of the equations and stuff? Um, so with this first example, we've got it says graph y equals 2x minus 4. Typically, the first thing that you might do is set up a table, an xy table. Some people write them up and down. Some people go, write them left to right. And so I'm going to set up a table here. Maybe give myself one more. And then what typically people do is they'll pick numbers for x. This is called the independent variable. And so I'm going to do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then what you do is you just plug those in. So if we plug in negative 2, we do 2 times negative 2 minus 4. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Minus 4 is negative 8. Then we plug in negative 1. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. Minus 4, negative 6. Plug in 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 4, negative 4. Plug in 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 4, negative 2. Plug 2 in, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. So then you go through and you graph all of these points. So negative 2, negative 8, 2, 4, 4 8. Negative 1, negative 6, 0, negative 4, 1, negative 2, 2, 0. And you notice they kind of all go at the same pattern. You keep going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And you just keep drawing a bunch of points on there. And then eventually what you're going to do is you're going to grab your ruler or whatever straight thing you have, and you're going to draw yourself a nice straight line through all of those points. So line is just a teeny bit off. I'll kind of move it up. There we go. All right, so that's your line. And what, what the equation for a line is, is it gives you every single point on that line. You could be talking about decimals, fractions, whole numbers, integers, whatever, but it gives you all of the points that lie on that line. All right, so there's a little bit of vocab we're going to talk about here with these. Um, let's start with what's called the intercepts. Well, actually, let's do this. This is called the x-axis, the one that goes side to side, and the one that goes up and down is called the y-axis. It's just a refresher. And then when the, where the line crosses the x-axis, this is called the x-intercept. X-intercept. Another word for that in algebra is called the zero. Some equations have more than one zero, uh, but a, a line like this only has one zero. Where it crosses the y-axis is called the y-intercept. Okay, so we've got the x-intercept, the y-intercept. Another thing that you can tell from the graph is what's called the slope. And so what you do is you just pick two points on the graph, any two points on the graph, and you count the rise, so how far up it goes. This we usually call the rise, R-I-S-E. And then how far over you go, they call the run. And so for the slope... We usually use the letter M, and that often is referred to as rise divided by run, or rise over run. And so in this case, the rise is up 2, and the run is to the right 1. So if you go to the right, it's positive. Go to the left, it's negative. So in this case, the slope is 2 over 1, or just 2. All right, so let's talk about slope. There's a bunch of different ways that slope is referred to. One is rise over run. One is called change in y over change in x. A way that you can write change in y over change in x with symbols is triangle y, which is the Greek letter delta. Delta means change. So delta y over delta x, just change in y over change in x. Um, another way, like a way to calculate it, if you want a formula, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And what that means is if you have two points on this graph, so this point here would be over 4, up 4. 
And the next point would be over five up six. And so what you would do is one of these would be x1, y1, and one would be y, x2, y2. Then you just plug those into that formula. Another way that some people refer to slope is called average rate of change. This is a very common calculus term. Uh, whenever you hear average rate of change in calculus, you think slope, slope of a line or slope of a tangent line sometimes. But average rate of change should be synonymous with slope. Okay, so this was our first example. It's in what's called slope intercept form. If you notice, the y intercept is at 0, negative 4, and that is in the equation right here. The, the constant term in the equation is always the y-intercept if it's in slope-intercept form. And then this 2 out here, that's the slope. We'll write that down a little bit later. All right, next one. It says graph 2x minus 6y equals 12. So this is just a different form of a line. It's, it's still a line. There's really nothing fancy here. Um, but this is called standard form, and I'll define that a little bit later. But typically, the easiest thing to do with standard form, if we set up a table, is we're going to find the intercepts. And so we're going to start with when x is 0, and then we're also going to look at what if y is 0. So let's start with when x is 0. 2 times 0 is 0, so that first term is just 0. So then we end up with negative 6y equals 12. So if I want to solve for y, I'm going to divide by negative 6, and I get y equals negative 2. So when x is 0, the y value has to be negative 2. All right, let's do the same thing when y is 0. So if y is 0, that means that 6 times 0 is 0, so we get 2x equals 12. Then we'll divide by 2, and we get x equals 6. So right now, I have two points. I'm going to get rid of this work here. I've got 0, negative 2, over 0, down 2, and then 6, 0, over 6, up 0. And then what you do is you grab your ruler, and you make a nice pick neon green here you make a nice straight line connecting those two dots. And I'll extend it out in both directions. There we go. So this is going to be our line. It passes through those two points. So in standard form, it's really nice to find the intercepts. But this only worked well because that 12, uh, the 12 right here, is divisible by both 2 and 6. If this happened to be 11 instead of 12, then it wouldn't have been quite as nice. You would have had some kind of funky decimals. You still could have gotten a line drawn, but it wouldn't be quite as precise. Um, in that case, you would want to do convert it into one of the other forms, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. OK, the next uh, form is called, and I forgot to type this in, but I'll write it in. This is called point slope form. Point slope form. And so point slope form of a line is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So this one, I think, is the easiest to work with. I think it's the most valuable. It's crucial that you know this one because it's super easy. If you know the point and you know a slope, you know the slope and you know a point, you're good to go. So uh, in this equation, m is the slope. So that means my slope is going to be negative 2 thirds. And then x1, y1 is a point on the line. So this is x1, and over here is y1. And you notice it's x minus x1. So that means x1 has to be 4. And y1 has to be 3, not negative 3 and not negative 4, because it's x minus x1, so it would be x minus 4. So uh, what that tells me is I've got a point in terms of x's and y's 
it's 4 comma 3. So I'm going to go over 4, up 3, and make a point. There's my point. And then the slope is negative 2 thirds. So that means I'm going to go down 2 and over 3 and make my next point. And then over 3. So down 2, over 3, next point. You can keep repeating this pattern. Back 3, up 2. Back 3, up 2. And so my line is going to go, let's see, I'll use a nice straight line here. There we go. Let's see. Let's undo that. There we go. Did not undo it. There we go. I'll just leave it like that. All right. So we've got our line that goes through that point with the slope. You're good to go. All right. So the three common forms of a linear equation are these three forms. They're point-slope form, so if you haven't taken notes on this, this would be a great page to write down. Point-slope form is listed there. We just talked about this one. You know the slope and a point, you got your equation. Slope-intercept form, the m part of the equation is the slope. The plus b is the y-intercept. So that's uh, if you know the slope and the y-intercept, you got that. And then standard form is ax plus by equals c. And we talked about how it's typically easier to graph by finding the intercepts of this graph. So you would set it up where you've got an xy table. You make x0, y0, figure out what the other has to be, and you'll have your two intercepts. Now, one other thing with standard form that is somewhat going to be somewhat helpful, I guess, is you you want to be able to manipulate this equation to get it into point slope or slope intercept form, excuse me. And so let's talk about that. Go back down here. And let's convert this into y equals mx plus b form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract ax from both sides. Because I want to get just y by itself. So I get negative ax plus C, and then I divide by B on both sides. And when I divide by B, I have to divide everything by B. So I end up with Y equals negative A over B X plus C over B. So the reason I did this is because if you're given standard form, then you can safely say that the slope on everything in standard form is going to be negative a over b and the y-intercept is going to be c divided by b now i'll be honest i've been teaching math for a long time i don't remember this it's not something that i have committed to memory but what i can do is i can manipulate the equation to get it into this form and then i have my slope and i have my y-intercept but if you want to try to memorize this by all means, go right ahead. All right, so that's everything in the first video of just graphing lines and the understanding of slope.